Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is a disease that is caused by the death of motor nerve cells or neurons, which are specialized cells that control muscle movement and coordination. In ALS patients, their brain can no longer send signals through the motor neurons to control their muscles, making it difficult for them to speak, swallow, and breathe. The disease eventually progresses to full paralysis and respiratory failure, resulting in death. 80% of ALS patients have an average life expectancy of 2-5 to five years with another 10-20% to 20% surviving over 5 years and the remaining 5-10% to 10% of patients surviving over 10 years after symptoms begin. However, there are rare cases of patients surviving for an even longer period of time, such as a famous physicist Dr. Stephen Hawking who lived for 55 years after his diagnosis. This varying survival rate depends on multiple factors with research showing that diagnosis at an advanced age, the spread of ALS to the medulla oblongata, also referred to as the bulbar onset or non-invasive ventilation and drug treatment correlate with reduced survival rates. Bulbar ALS accounts for the majority of symptoms in ALS as an individual begins to have speech and swallowing difficulties. Based on a study with 575 ALS patients from England, the data demonstrated that survival rate over time appeared to be affected by the area of ALS onset, with the bulbar onset group having a much lower survival rate compared to the limb onset group as shown in this graph. ALS is also divided into two categories, sporadic and familial. Sporadic ALS is a more common form of ALS accounting for more than 95% of all ALS patients. The development of this form of ALS is unknown, as the onset is random with no apparent genetic inheritance. On the other hand, familial ALS has been shown to have strong genetic influences with more than 12 mutant genes identified. The onset of symptoms also differ between the two forms of ALS, with sporadic ALS typically appearing in patients around their late 50s to early 60s and familial ALS patients developing symptoms a little earlier, typically in their late 40s to early 50s. One of the proposed mechanisms for the death of motor neurons is from a genetic mutation in the SOD1 gene, which alters the breakdown of free radicals or toxins in the body. As a result, the increased number of free radicals will cause damage to the structure of the neurons and their contained genetic information. This causes the affected motor neurons to undergo programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis, leading to a loss of movement coordination. Another mechanism of ALS is the overproduction of the signaling molecule called glutamate. Glutamate is released from one neuron to the next, acting as a messenger that passes information between neurons. The release of glutamate is regulated by sodium ion channels along the neurons. However, in ALS patients, glutamate activity is increased, resulting in the hyperstimulation of neurons, thereby increasing calcium levels. As a result, the abnormally high levels of calcium present in the neurons will induce apoptosis in a process called glutamate excitotoxicity. Think of this event as having too many letters in your mailbox, with the mailbox no longer able to receive any additional letters. Eventually, the mailbox will break from the strain of having too many letters crammed inside. Now let's speak to an expert about ALS. There's one presently available drug for ALS, and that's a drug called Rinazole, which is of a rather mutant benefit. So it's uh, said to prolong survival, and in meta-analysis it seems to prolong survival somewhere between, let's say, two months at the shortest and maybe nine months at the longest. Nine months would be a bit of a stretch. The more recent uh, drug is not yet available in Canada other than by personal importation, and that's a drug called Adarabone. And people are of mixed opinions about that. My own feeling is that the drug is harmful, not helpful, uh, uh, but uh, everybody will have to make their own mind upon that. If you are, have ALS and it depends on your marital status and your social supports and everything, but for let's say a single person uh, who is a multimillionaire, you can look after yourself at home and you can provide, you know, you can get uh, PSW, personal support worker help coming in, you can get people coming in as you need them, and uh, if you don't have that, you're in an institution. Uh, if you've got family supports, uh, families get burned out with this disease and they need support, and sometimes uh, you can't get adequate support or enough support from the government, so social economic status is hugely important.
in survival and in quality of life. We need to get a handle on, on what causes the disease, and we still don't know that. It's simplistic to say, but I think probably true, that in the, the most easily curable diseases are going to be the familial diseases, the genetic diseases. And they're going to be probably uh, with the tools of sort of molecular biology. Unfortunately, it's going to be far more complicated than people think to develop a cure, even for familial disease. We don't know in any case of familial disease, we don't know why people develop disease. We know the gene, we don't know the mechanism. Right? So we know that they're defective genes, we know lots of them. We don't know a single proven mechanism how those defective genes cause the disease that we call ALS. I think, I think they need to be looked at in an ALS clinic, right? And, and they can choose to follow up in that clinic or not, that's up to them. But they have to make sure that the diagnosis is right and that the treatment options are explored and explained to them so that they understand as best as, as people can. Uh, what's available to them. Um, and I think that would be the number one. As mentioned in the interview with Dr. Turnbull, our understanding of the underlying mechanisms of ALS is still limited. Therefore, research to find a cure is a challenging task. However, there are therapies that aim to relieve the symptoms of ALS and delay the progression of the disease. Realuzol, also known as Realutech, is the first FDA-approved drug to slow ALS progression. The drug acts as an inhibitor to block the sodium channels on the neurons to reduce the release of glutamate. This in turn delays cell apoptosis and is estimated to prolong survival by around 2-3 to three months. A double-blind study was conducted in France on the effects of real on 155 ALS patients. 78 participants were given placebo, while 77 participants were given 50mg of real twice a day. After one year of treatment, 58% of the placebo-treated group were still alive, while 74% of the Rilluzol treated group were still alive. The Rilluzol treated group also showed a significant delay in the deterioration of muscle strength and functional ability compared to the placebo group. More recently, another drug called Adaravone, also known as Radicavo, was approved by Health Canada on October 4, 2018. However, the drug is still not widely available yet. It is important to note that the specific mechanisms behind Adaravone are still unknown but it is believed to target free radicals in the cells to prevent damaging motor neurons. Similar to the previous study on Realuzol, a double-blind and placebo-controlled trial was conducted on 137 Japanese ALS patients. 68 patients received a placebo, while 69 patients received a daily injection of 60 mg of Adaravone. After six months of treatment, the Adaravone-treated group had a 33% reduction in their functional decline as determined by the revised ALS functional rating scale, a scale that monitors functional change of ALS patients over time. However, since the mechanism is still unclear, many researchers still question the efficacy of the drug.